in the bowl, there should be a little plaster island where the water and the plaster reach saturation point and the plaster can't absorb much more water and it just floats at the top. So, at this point you would start counting on your timer. You have approximately seven to ten minutes to complete the, the full set of tasks, which is adding the plaster powder in and making sure the ventilation is on. making sure the plaster settles, degassing the plaster, pouring the plaster, and then if your printed part is solid or you're dealing with a solid object like wax, making sure that you go through the secondary vacuum process. Okay. So, let tap on the bowl to get the last of the powder. And then we're going to start with the spatula. So you can see here, that is our island. You'll notice the island isn't fully retreating into the bowl. You can tap it to bring the powder up to a vibration, sort of a liquefaction behavior as the material, the powdered material starts to engage with the fluid and move like a fluid, right? You can see the same behavior with powder coating where you're running compressed air through, but it's just a light vibration to suspend the powders. But you'll notice that the powder itself, here we go again. Uh, energy efficient light, you are not. So the powder itself is fully saturated, but not going down any further. So you know that the water can't absorb much more, the plaster can't absorb much more water, and you're at a good mixing rate. Now, if you look at the curve setting, right, for heavy castings, it's 38 grams, or, uh, sorry, 38 milliliters of water to 100 grams of powder, and with the regular casting, it's 40 milliliters of water to 100 grams of powder. So it's just two milliliters of water that makes a difference between a heavy casting and a light casting. So at this point, we can start folding our material. I'm just stirring from the bottom to get a nice uniform plaster mixture. It doesn't require that much. And this is a little thick. If it starts to look chunky, you have to be careful when you're folding your plaster in, right? Because we're trying to reduce the amount of air bubbles. plaster looks this thick, it's okay to add about two milliliters of water, because you're on the heavy side. I'm just using the spatula to slowly fold the material in. This is nice, thick investment, like a heavy cream. You can still see some chunks, but we're just folding against the bowl. That helps get the chunks out. The nice part about the rubber bowl is you can feel the pressure that you're applying with the vacuum and with the spatula. We're going to take it over to the vacuum table. We're going to rinse the spatula off in between, leaving that clean. And then 
going to wet the vacuum table lightly before vacuuming. So, come over here. This is the vacuum table. Okay, so we're going to take the bowl. We've already wetted the perimeter. We're going to take the bell, place that around the bowl. Turn the machine to invest. That's right here. Press on. Atmosphere that rushes in will collapse the plaster air bubbles. Okay. So at this point, we can take our part. And pour our plaster in. We're just filling our plaster just above the surface of our part. Okay, we're going to place the bell directly on top. off our flask with any remaining plaster. There we go. This is a little thick. And then just a light tap to get it to settle. Now if you have any excess forming on the edge, you can wipe that off. Yeah, I caught the heat drop. 